I'm going to start creating the wall texture for this dungeon corridor. I'm going to do it in Substance Designer, and it's probably going to take a couple of videos to get through it. So here I am in Substance Designer as it begins. I'm going to click on New Substance. I'm going to use the PBR Metallic Roughness template, and I'm going to call this Dungeon Corridor Wall Video. Call it. We'll just call it Video. And this is how it is going to open up. I'm just going to drag these around. Now, my interface may look a little bit different than yours, but that should be okay. So there's a few things I'm not going to use. I'm not going to use the roughness or metallic. So I'm going to get rid of those. And I'm going to just box select these, and I'm going to drag them up. So I will be using, at some point, base color, normal, ambient occlusion, and height. Now, I'm going to click on this uniform color here for the ambient occlusion and delete it. I'm going to drag out from this ambient occlusion and I'm going to search ambient occlusion and I'm going to use this node instead. So we're going to do that. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to click on the normal. We're going to come over here to the parameters and I'm going to turn on OpenGL. I'll be using that and I'm going to pull this out just a little bit more for the intensity for the normal. I'm going to start by setting that at about 8. I'm also going to come up here to the materials, default edit, and under here under normal, I'm going to, under DirectX normal, I'm going to put on false for that. Okay. Here's my uh, graph dungeon corridor wall video and unsafe package. I'm going to save, and I'm just going to save that. So everything's saved, ready to go. I'm going to come back to my preview, and I'll start with that one. All right, so there are a few other things we'll need to do, but we're gonna get started here. So I wanna make a brick wall. I'm gonna start by pressing the space bar and typing in tile and choose the tile generator. And I'll see a preview of it down here. I don't see anything yet on my 3D object or my in my 3D view, that's, which is fine. All right, so there's the tile generator. I'm gonna come over to the properties and I'm gonna choose some numbers. I'm going to choose four for the X and six for the Y and I'm going to come down here and under pattern I'm going to choose a square and then it's going to pretty much disappear but I'm going to scroll down here and increase the luminance random and now I have this the next thing I'm going to do is offset these bricks a little bit so let's put here in the position offset let's try 0.5 and now it sort of looks like a brick pattern, but we'll do a little bit of randomness on there as well. Okay, that's good. Now, I'm going to add some more nodes to this. I'm going to click on here and drag out and release, and then I can search. And I'm going to type in edge, and I'm going to use this edge detect. And we can see this. Well, I think that looks really cool as it is. I'm going to adjust some of these parameters. I'm going to change this to 3, and I'm going to change the roundness to 3 as well. All right, you can put in whatever values you think are going to work uh, well for you. I'm going to add two more nodes, and then we'll have a look at this. I'm going to click here and pull out, and I'm going to add a bit of a bevel on here. Now, you can't really see it anymore, but we'll fix that in just a moment. Let's try 0.5 and 0 0.5. I'll do one more thing here and I'll pull out of this top one and I'm going to add auto levels. And now I can see it and it's a little bit blurry. Now I'm about to connect these but I tend to like to have a blur node at the end so I hit the space bar and type blur and I'm going to attach this to here and I'm going to attach this to my normal. Now I'm starting to see something to my ambient occlusion and for the height I'm gonna get rid of that we don't need that and just plug right into the height and I'll just maybe pull that out to there so we're starting to see something but the blur is too strong so let's put that at about 0 0.2 or something and now we can start to see some bricks all right a little bit rounded looking good all right so we have our tile generator here edge detect a little bit of bevel, levels, 
and we are connected. I'm going to grab these two and slide them out like that. Okay, we're going to start building off of this spot right here. I'm going to pull out and I'm going to type in flood fill, just part of the word, and then I get flood fill. And as soon as I do that, you see these gradients, but they're very regular so far. That's okay. We're going to make a change in a moment. We're going to pull out of here and we'll type flood fill again and a number of choices come up that we can use. I'm going to choose flood fill to random grayscale. And now I have this and this is starting to look like a brick wall. I'm going to stop at that point with this row and I'm going to move on and do another row and pull down flood fill. We can see that again, but this time I'm going to pull out and type flood fill, flood fill to gradient. And now we can see this. But over here in the properties, I'm going to adjust the angle and then angle variation. We're going to use this stuff to create bricks that sort of are chipped a little bit uh, along the edges. And I'll show you what I mean by that when we get a couple more. I'm going to do this again. I'm going to box select this. And I'm going to control D to duplicate it. I'm going to pull it down and click on the flood filter gradient node and change the angle and just change the angle variation a bit. So we get some variation between this one and this one. Now I'm going to change this one here to have a different random seed like that too. So I got this one, double click that, double click that, and I have that one. I'm going to do this maybe one more time. So we just have a nice bit of variation on here. So we'll take this, I'll just change the angle, change the angle variation, and change the seed. That one was two. I'll make this one four. So we have four, we have three variations of what I'm going to use to create the chipping. And this one is going to be for the height of the bricks. So let's have a look at that. Out of each of these, I'm going to have a distance node. So let me click that. And you can see what that has done there. But I really want to connect this. And I'm going to highlight this one here and delete it. Now you can't see anything going on because we need an input, a mask. And the mask I'm going to use is these bricks. So I'll show you what happens when I do that. I'm going to take this, pull it over, and plug it in. And I'm going to have to do that all the way down here. So I'm going to do something to this node in just a moment. So I'm just going to leave this the way it is. We have, we have that. We have this distance. I'm going to do the same thing here with these ones. So I'm going to pull out, type distance. And that is in the wrong one. So I'm going to take that. I'm going to delete that. And now I want this to come into here as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my mouse here over the line, click and click and hold alt. And now I have this sort of separator. I think we have stuff like that in Blender as well. So I can now grab this little circle here and pull a noodle or a little thing out of there as well. So I'm connecting this as a mask to these things. And we're going to carry on here. Sometimes you can't see the result quite yet until we get a little further. I want one for that one. And I'm going to do the same thing down here, distance. If I just pull this one down and put it there, it'll delete the old one and then I can connect to there. Okay, so we have this and I can grab this and just, you know, position it and try to make it as, as neat as possible. All my graphs are not overly neat but this is what we have so far all right we're not seeing the the effects of this yet what i'm going to do on this one is i'm going to pull out and i'm going to add a histogram range and this just sort of controls you can see that it's a lighter gray instead of being so extreme and using all the extremes of highs and low this sort of squashes them down a little bit so you're using you know a sort of a mid-level and then if you need to you can build up higher in the whites or lower in the black so this sort of averages things out and we can play with some of these values watch this it gets even less gray or more 
Now we can have a look at what this does, this, this row right here. If I take this and I plug it into here, you can see that the bricks are starting to go at different levels. All right, and if I take this and I adjust it, let's turn that, you can see how it affects the bricks. All right, so we'll leave it around there. Okay. That's not going to stay. I'm going to get rid of that. We don't see anything, but hang on. What I need to do now is I need to work on these so that they're a little bit sharper. I'm going to make them sharper, white and black, with levels. And then we're going to join things together. We're going to see how this can be used to chip away at the bricks. All right, so I'm going to pull out, and I'm going to either click here or I'm going to click on here for levels. And I'm going to drag this white down here, and you can see it's getting very very sharp like that really um, distinguished that's not the word i'm looking for uh very obvious very white and black all right i'm doing that to all of these dragging out and then just clicking on levels and pulling them the same way we are ready to start blending things together now all right which is what we need we need to blend this and this and this and this so I'm going to do that now. I'm going to pull out here and I'm going to choose a blend node. Now, when I do that, it always goes into the second one and I believe we're okay. And I believe I can put that into the first node. So there's a blend right there. And then I'm going to pull out of here and choose another blend and take this one and put it in. And then I'm going to come out with another one, blend, and put the last one in there. Now these blends, if you look over here, they have an opacity and they have a blending mode. Let's try Min Darken. And that's the one that we're going to need. Let's do that for these ones. And I believe we'll do it for this one in order for them to chip away. All right, we're gonna join these together and we're gonna create another blend here. And that's what we're going to use to join the main row and all of this stuff. We're gonna join it to here. And let's try this, let's try multiply here. And you can see the chipping that I was talking about here. We still have our slight difference in height and we now have the rocks chipped notice i have this on min darken that's the one that you use to get these pieces chipped out like that you could experiment with the different ones but that is the one that is going to give us that effect all right and you can then experiment with the opacities all right you see i'm reducing that there Come over here. Try this one. All right, that pushes them out and changes the cutting. Of course, you can come back to any of these, for example, the levels, and make changes. And that's what will often happen in Substance Designer. People will come back and make changes and see how that affects the final graph. Let's come back now to the normal, and I'm gonna click on Materials, Default, Physically, me physically Metallic Rough, is def everybody has trouble saying that. That thing with the check mark, and click on Tessellation. And I've got DirectX Normal False. I'm gonna scroll down to where it says Height, where it says Scale here. I'm gonna increase the scale. And that's going to tessellate this or push the geometry out and in just a little bit so we can see that a little bit better and it looks a little bit more realistic. All right. I can also undock my window and look at that. I can hold down shift and control to move my environment around so I can see this. I can change environments. 
And the blur node, I'll put that back on. The blur node that I have at the end, let me just adjust the light here, helps to just smooth this out a little bit. Another thing I can do is click on the ambient occlusion and where it says height depth, let's just increase that to darken it. Sometimes it just helps to see even if you don't use that much, but I don't mind that effect there. I can click on scene and choose plain high res because that's how it's going to look. Uh, it's going to be a plane and then it'll be tiled um, in my scene. Or I can choose something like the rounded cylinder, which is very common and it looks sort of like a castle thing. So we've created our bricks using the tile generator. We've done a couple of manipulations here. We've created some variation in height. We've created some chipping, as we call it there. And we're going to move on in the next video to do some holes, some damage, some cracks. I think what we'll do is we will grab um, all of this, let's say. Press the space bar and start typing frame. We'll click frame here. It'll put a frame around it and we can change the title to something like tiles slash shipping. And I usually like to change the color to just white. I think it looks better. So we can stay organized with all of this. All right, the other thing we should do is come over here, right click and just save. So we have saved this and we are ready to continue in the next video, come back to my, my view and uh, just look at what we've done. I think it looks pretty cool. So we'll leave it at that. We'll come back and we'll start putting some damage cracks and holes, like I said, in the next one, but uh, that'll get us started. Take care.